What's up everybody, this is Captain Jack and I'm here with an unofficial part two of the Big Reactors tutorial. In this short video, we are going to solve some problems that you guys have been talking about in the comments from the first video. And I'm gonna show you three high powered Big Reactor setups, one of which is behind me, which I'll leave for a world download, and two of which are on our Platinum Donor server. Hope you enjoy this video. All right, so before I explain this big turbine behind me, I just want to let you guys know that if you're not sure what I'm talking about in regards to this mod during this video, um, it's probably because you didn't watch the first video, and that in that video I tell you um, exactly what to do with each of the blocks for this mod. I explain what they do and how they work with each other. Um, this is basically a part two where I show you some, some end game turbines as I have already mentioned. Now the design behind me is uh, the design that is heavily used on our Platinum Donor server, and I believe uh, Mad Jimmy designed this with a low back, um, or one or the other, I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, this is an extremely powerful turbine, also an extremely expensive turbine. Um, the stats are right here on the board to my right, or my left and your right. Um, it's uh, 9 high, 9 wide, 16 long. It's got 84 rotor blades, 37 enderium blocks. The rotor speed runs at 1796.8, which is extremely close to that 1800 optimal um, running point. And the power output for this reactor, um, or for this setup here, is uh, 24,069 RF per tick. So it's pretty beast. You'll also note that behind me, on the left, I have three different power ports here, here, and here. And that is because this um, turbine puts out so much power that one will not simply handle all the power that comes out of it. I believe each of the power ports can support 10,000 RF per tick, so you'll need three of them to uh, capture that last 4,069 RF per tick. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can set these up. Some of them you may agree with, some of them you may not agree with. Um, what you can do is, um, and by agree and not agree, I mean it's kind of cheaty, you can use Railcraft steam boilers, and I didn't mention this in the first video just because it wasn't part of the mod, but if you do choose to go this route, it is possible. It basically bypasses the need for a regular passive reactor. Um, three of these steam boilers will put out enough steam to uh, power this steam turbine here. Now, if you have your own design, you're going to have to figure out how much steam you need, but three of these uh, high-pressure boilers, um, max size will power a big reactor turbine. Now you'll notice here that I have this hooked up to a Tesseract. And this was one of the big questions um, that came up in a lot in the comments from the previous video is how do I get all the steam or all the water into my big reactor? I need so many aqueous accumulators or I need so many different coolant ports, ports um, that it just makes it, it, it seem stupid. Um, you can put a Tesseract directly adjacent to a turbine and I can't see it there. Um, I have it set up right here. Um, this is a reactor coolant port. I'm um, meant to put a turbine port here. But if you put a Tesseract adjacent to it, um, this one I have set up to, um, I have it sending fluid, and then I have this receiving fluid. Again, I just plopped it right on there. This will get enough steam, or as much steam as this turbine needs to operate um, at 100%, and it's building up slowly. Um, we're at 4,000 RF per tick here. Um, so that is one way that you can get all the steam that you need into your reactor. Um, same applies with water, so this might be a good way to eliminate the need for a bunch of different coolant ports on your either reactor or your turbine. Another thing that was mentioned is, uh, and thank you guys um, so much for um, commenting so much in the previous video, it's helped a lot, I know, and a lot of this information came from you guys, so thank you again. Um, you can put these directly adjacent, as somebody mentioned there, that was a really long strand conversation. Um, red goes with red, blue goes with blue, see this, this one's in, input, this one's output. This one's input, this one's output here. Um, for the two of them, they can go back to back. And I'm pretty sure that um, one or two of these will be able to handle the entire flow of liquid between the two. So here I have, and you can't see it because they are back to back, but right here, there's a um, reactor coolant port next to a turbine coolant port. And the same thing with down here. Um, one is doing steam, one is doing water. And uh, I believe you can place them right next to each other to eliminate the need for any piping or anything. Uh, basically, the water and steam flows freely between the reactor and the turbine. So that's a little bit more of a compact way to possibly set things up. So that came up a lot. All right, the next problem I want to solve for you guys is the problem of water. How in the world can you feed enough water into your big reactor to keep the stupid thing running um, without running dry all the time because the bigger reactors as some of you probably have figured out 
take an absolutely enormous amount of water to keep running. So I've got that problem solved. Right in front of me here is a regular fluid duct, which I believe can only transfer about 100 millibuckets of liquid per tick. Um, next we have the Ender-IO pressurized uh, fluid conduit, which is a far better choice um, than the fluid duct, and that will push through uh, 400 millibuckets per tick. Um, but if you really want to go all the way, you're going to want to make these transfer nodes, and uh, they're extremely expensive. And by extremely expensive, just take a look at what I mean by this. Okay, it's going to cost some uh, some blue dyes, some buckets, um, but this is going to cost you a block of redstone each, um, some stone, a little bit more redstone over here. Um, it will also use uh, some of these transfer pipes, and they're extremely expensive, um, ridiculously hard to make. And if that wasn't hard enough, um, the upgrades for these things are even harder. Um, ridiculously expensive. This is super high end game kind of stuff here. We got the speed upgrade, which requires four blocks of redstone um, for every four speed upgrades and some gold. The mining upgrade costs iron and uh, some blue dyes. And this one is the worst of all, which costs diamonds and a speed upgrade to make these stacks upgrades. And uh, those will allow you to push more fluid through these um, these things here. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of water flowing through these things. Okay, let me just show you how much because uh, these are probably the best way to keep your reactor cooled, and that's what I used on my little mining place over there. There it is. Uh, let me just show you how fast these fill up. I'm going to connect three of these here, and uh, you can see that a huge amount of water is flowing through these things, um, these transfer nodes. This is going to be um, what you are going to want to use to get water into your reactor because really once you have reactors that are like 10 stories high there's just no possible way to um, well there is a way but the amount of aqueous accumulators and so on and so forth just will not cut it extra cells which I used in the previous tutorial just will not cut it you're gonna wanna use these transfer nodes so that's the uh, solution um, albeit an expensive one to get enough water inside of your um, reactor and inside of your turbine all right, so this uh, mining facility that I made actually started out as a tutorial, but I kind of got carried away, as you can see. Um, but uh, lucky for you guys, you get a world download of this neat little factory. Um, there's nothing really special about it besides that it looks pretty, and it has um, four different turbines. Um, one of them slowed down a little bit on me because I broke a block. Um, but uh, what this is is a self-contained mining facility. It mines all sorts of ores, and it is completely powered by itself. Um, you can hear that obnoxious beeping in the background because right now the facility is currently on lockdown. You can see that's happening up there. Uh, basically, I have a big reactor up here in, uh, in the center of the room. And uh, down here, the facility is on lockdown. So for the sake of sanity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip that switch. We're going to uh, take us out of lockdown mode here. Dink. So we go to operational, um, and down below um, we have all sorts of different things here. So these rooms all opened up. We have electronic storage, um, and these are all of the ores that this facility is mining. You can see we have tons of eulorium, and I did um, set the preference of my lasers to mine eulorium, which also nets me a ton of emeralds. I did not spawn in any of this stuff. It has all completely been mined by this facility since I started making it. Um, it's, it, uh, it's not in a server, so it hasn't been running the entire time, so I don't have too much ores. Um, over here we have ore processing, and as the ores um, come in, they'll get uh, smushed, or whatever it happens to be. I can't seem to catch these as they're going through. Um, don't have all the ores being processed inside of here, but a bunch of them are, as you can see. Um, we have cyanite reprocessing over here. This is taking all of my uh, cyanite and turning it into uh, plutonium and throwing it back into the system. And then I have um, some resource monitoring over here, which will tell me all of what I have. So 125 plutonium there from my cyanite reprocessor. Um, there is a bunch of stuff going on in this facility and a lot of stuff is hidden, um, which I'm not sorry for because I already explained it, but uh, if I whip out my wrench here, you can see that some stuff kind of appears in the walls. You have a bunch of wiring down in there and uh, so on and so forth. Um, so that's uh, just a little facility. You can kind of check it out for yourself. If you uh, do download the world, keep in mind that you're going to have to be playing probably on our pack Icehenge um, to get this thing working properly. Um, right here, this is how the uh, facility is doing all the mining. I have MFR lasers, um, and these are 
consuming 20,000 RF per tick. So um, that's why I need all four of these huge turbines. And there's a little bit of excess power, which I'm using to run the um, ore processing and the AE system down there. So that's all coming from uh, four of these lasers, which are drilling down into bedrock and getting me all sorts of tons of ores. You can see that these uh, um, turbines are fully powered, 24,069 RF per tick. I did not lie, 84 of 80 blades running. Um, 17,906.8 RPM, um, and I have all four of these blasting out power. Uh, behind here, I have the um, power taps, and these are coming out, and if I do this, you can see the power setup underneath there. I have them flowing into a tesseract. Um, there's the power taps back there. You can see them a little tiny bit. Okay, and this is Ender IO, awesome flipping mod. Make sure you check out the video on that if you want to learn how to hide all these things and make all these wonderfully compact little setups. Um, but anyways, um, this is what... Um, this facility is it, it looks um, like a lot but it's not really too much going on here just a very streamlined little setup that ended up being a little side project of mine sorry I'm talking so fast anyways um, let's check out um, some of the setups on our platinum server we're gonna check out Mad Jamie's um, or uh, Watson's or somebody's and Ed Lobeck's all right so we're here at uh, Watson's base and you can see that he's uh, basically got uh, almost the same setup as I have just uh, arranged a little bit differently he's got the four turbines all doing the same thing uh, putting out the same amount of energy um, you can see that he's made use of uh, these transfer nodes here um, which you basically have to if you have reactors of this size um, he's got and I didn't mention this before but you can hook these transfers up right up to uh, um, source blocks of water and they'll do just fine um, makes them kind of OP but in any case I'm putting out 8,000 uh, millibuckets per steam, just like uh, my reactor was. I didn't actually look inside mine. Um, it's running very cool, which is a good thing. And uh, he's got four of these going, full steam, uh, putting out almost 100,000 RF per tick. So this is Watson's setup. Um, yeah, before we leave Watson's, I just noticed this behind his wall here. He's got about 9 billion worth of uh, RF storage here in these capacitor banks. Uh, so he has really uh, got plenty of power here. This one's... Not, uh, it's loading up very slowly, but uh, yeah, all these are capable of holding 1 billion. Uh, these are massive capacitor banks, also from uh, Ender IO. All right, so we're here in uh, Ed Loback's base, and he has got an absolutely enormous setup, probably with far more plan than what you, than what you actually see here. Um, but this is a massive big reactor up the center here. He's got eight MFR lasers, so he's pulling um, a ton of 660,000 RF per tick to run these babies full steam. Um, probably he never needs to even quarry out another hole in the entire game ever because he's getting so many resources from these lasers. Um, but here's the setup. He's running a total of 10 turbines, 16 by 9 turbines here. And uh, if I can find his controller without getting killed by these lasers because they're excessively dangerous. Okay, he's putting out uh, 20,000 millibuckets per tick. That's 2,000 per reactor. So that's where that number comes from. Um, he's running pretty cool here too, and uh, um, this, yeah, this is Ed's setup, but uh, he's got a lot of power coming through here. I'm not going to poke around the rest of his base, um, but I'm sure there is much more planned for this. All right, if you thought Watson's capacitor banks were big, Ed's are even bigger. He's got a capability of 6 billion RF inside of these two massive things. Um, yeah, there's not really much you can say about this besides that it's a lot. It's a lot. All right, and last but not least, we're inside Mad Chamie's little setup here. He's got eight 16 by nine turbines, which are currently offline at the moment. Um, you can see that he's used some of these railcraft boilers, or he did use them earlier in the game to keep some of his reactors powered. Um, and he also has this enormous, passively cooled monster that literally takes blocks, stacks and stacks and stacks of Eulorium blocks to fill this thing with enough uh, Eulorium. And it puts out um, 180,000 somewhere in the vicinity. This is not 160, this is 160,000. Add three zeros. Um, 184, five, six, holy crap. This thing is a monster. Look how much waste it's causing too. 92, oh my goodness. I've never actually powered this thing up for myself. Jamie, don't be mad that I'm doing this. Yeah, so it's running uh, right around 194,000 RF per tick. Um, provided that you have the resource to keep this thing running, you can get a ton of power. Holy crap. Okay, so that's three of uh, 
three setups in game, one setup outside of the game. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. But one quick announcement before I go is that I had to remove the lockdown function, uh, which is the doors that open and close in the lower level because of a problem with TMAC works. Um, didn't want to put out a world download link that was broken. So uh, you're going to have to add those back in if you want to make those doors for yourself. They were drawbridge blocks. Um, if you have any uh, questions or comments, make sure you leave them in the, uh, the comment section below. If I got something wrong, I would love to know about it, and I'm sure so would the rest of our viewers. We want to make sure the information out there is accurate and complete. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Check us out on all of our uh, social media outlets here. Uh, Facebook, um, you can go to our live chat on the minecrafters.com. You can download our website or download our uh, mod pack. It's Ice Henge. It's a big one, but it's an awesome one, and uh, you will love it, I promise. And that's it. Captain Jack out. Stay poised.